derivatives illegally, too. And they're trying to manipulate the market, and it's not going to do them any good. The physical uptake is so great that it eventually is going to overcome the futures market. And uh, how long that will take, I don't know. But I do know that I wouldn't touch an ETF in gold or silver with a 10-foot pole unless it was out of a Swiss bank or something, which there is one that has one. It's called Zurich Cantonal Bank. And I know the bank very well because I lived in Switzerland. And it's a good bank. I still wouldn't touch them. I'd much rather have my gold and silver coins because you don't own anything until it's by your side. How much would the estimate, how much would you estimate each point on the Dow to be worth presently? And how much would you value each point on the NYSE to be worth? I don't know. Because they, you know, they don't have any reality to anything other than the stocks that are in the index. And the, and the stocks are uh, based upon uh, their earnings. And the earnings aren't very good. Uh, Why do you think GE just went from from uh, 45 to 6? So I, I, I can't give you an answer on that. There, there, there's no There's no correlation there. And this one is according to the Telegraph UK that General Motors Europe has been urged to consider declaring Opel as German subsidiary insolvent rather than seek aid from European government. Should this action also be encouraged in the U.S.? Um, I think what all nations should do is set up tariffs. And in that way, they can produce cars for the domestic consumption, and all the cars that are subsidized and made more cheaply elsewhere will be charged a surcharge to sell their cars in the United States. And that means that if Americans are buying cars, that the prices will be relatively the same, you know, very close. And if the cars from foreign destinations are sold, in the United States, well, then the people who manufacture them will have to pay a tax to the government. And what that does is it makes production more attractive and it makes producers outside the country who used to be producing inside the United States have no reason to stay outside the United States because what they've done by getting cheap labor has neutralized their situation so that they can't make any more money by being outside anymore than they could in the U.S. And so I think that's coming. It'll be forced upon the United States, actually, because the number of vet nations are already started. But as far as bailing them out, the answer is no. Let them all go under. Hey, Bob, how can Ford continue to try to bail the, themselves out, not go to the government, to the to the begging window, whether they're successful or not, I guess that remains to be seen, and, and I don't know if you, you think they'll be successful or not, but at least they're trying, or is this just part of a, you know, if they... Speak? No, Ford, Ford, I think, will survive. And I'll tell you something smart they did, I mentioned on the program before, but to get rid of the inventory that they had in different countries, they're selling all of the models except three for 25% off, and they have been for about four months. And they're clearing all their inventory. In other words, if a vehicle costs $33,000, you could go buy it for 25. That's a good deal because competing models in other vehicles are selling between thirty two and thirty five thousand, not twenty five, where that vehicle would be normally selling. And so Sport is very smart. They're not giving uh any other incentive except that, such as zero financing and all this foolishness. Now, they
They wanted to clear inventory, and they did it. They're in the process still of doing it. But uh, the Americans don't know that. So a guy trots down and uh, buys a Ford for $33,000 in America, and his counterpart in Argentina or Germany or Mexico is buying the same vehicle for twenty five grand. But I think Ford will make it. Chrysler and GM are doomed. Well, you know what? If they don't go to, to the government for a bailout, I mean, you know, what support does it? Yeah, but they the only can go so them. far, Melody. Yeah. And it's with the same thing with all these corporations. Yeah. Another thing that we're going to have to deal with is the problem of foreign car manufacturers who are manufacturing in the United States, like the Japanese producers, that are going to be subsidized by their own governments to build cars in the United States. That's going to be a problem. Because it's going to force tariffs. Uh, and a quick question before we're out of time, uh, since we're speaking about automobiles. Last year, oil went up to $140, and we were told there's a shortage of oil, hence the high price. Now oil is at 45 and we do not hear any more shortage. Where did all this extra oil come from? Or we were just being lied to by Wall Street. You were being lied to by Wall Street, and I never went along with peak oil. I said it was insanity. There's enough oil in the world to bury it for the next 300 years. And the same with diamonds, incidentally. That's another giant scam. That really is. And I have a lot of good friends in business who wrote about that in peak oil, and they were mad at me because I didn't agree with them. Now they're saying to themselves, I wish I'd listened. Maybe we can get one more. One of the reports, uh, this isn't from Ivan, I read on the Internet, stated that the greatest threat to the U.S. is a catastrophic debt is the catastrophic debt load that is carrying for Mexico, Ukraine, Georgia, Eastern Europe, and other emerging, emerging market nations financed during the Clinton-Bush administration, and which amount to over $16 trillion. Should these countries begin to default on these massive loans? They already have. And incidentally, Mexico paid their bills back. So Mexico doesn't have that overhang, and they own $90 billion dollars worth of U.S. Treasuries. Is it 90 or 900? I don't know. I guess it's 90. You got another question? Um, I think we can get one. We get three minutes. No, not, not the quite. Oh, I'm, I'm cross-eyed today. We got the one uno minute. I think 30 seconds once we hear the news. Um, dire warnings have been issued by the dean of Russia's foreign ministry about the uh, uh, martial law this year and that the U.S. will split into six states. That's old news. Yeah, it is. And uh, I don't know. It's possible, but I don't think it's probable. Uh, anything's possible, um, but I, I don't think they're correct. But they get the same problem. Uh, that possibility exists in Russia as well. We're out of here until Monday. We'll be back. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. You guys have a safe weekend, please, and take care, and God bless. Thank you, Bob. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.